Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. What is happening third grade? Welcome to the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. This is video number 14. At this time, I'd love for you to go ahead and pause the video and solve number one and number two on your own, which means that you should have the worksheet that you need for today. If you're thinking, but Miss McCarthy, I don't have the worksheet that you're talking about. There should be a link down below or somewhere around this video that'll take you to the worksheet that you need for this episode, along with the other episodes in this Math FSA Boot Camp Series for third grade. All right, so go ahead and pause the video Try number one and number two, and I will see you in a second. All right, everybody, welcome back. Let's go ahead and check your work. So you know how I like to do it before I even break down the question. I like to take a quick like snapshot and determine the question type. I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five answer choices which means that this should be what kind of question? Yeah, a multi-select. Now that we know that it's a multi-select question and we're looking for possibly more than one answer choice, let's go ahead and break down this question. Okay, so it says, select the fractions which are represented by the total length marked on the number line below, and the number line shown. So here's our number line. And we've got different kinds of fractions. We've got one and three six, nine sixths, one and three thirds, 10 sixths, and one and three sixths. So there should be more than one answer choice here. So let's go ahead and talk about what we see on this number line here. So we have a whole number of zero, a whole number of one, and a whole number of two. That means that in between are our fractional pieces. And to find our denominator, what we need to do is count the total number of equal jumps between each whole number. So between zero, and one, let's count how many jumps. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure when you're counting, you're starting at the zero and you don't start counting until you get to that first jump. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six. That means our denominator is six. So this would be one sixth, two sixth, three sixth, four sixth, so hard for me to say. Five sixths, and then one whole would actually be the same as six sixths. And we can keep going like that. We can say seven sixths, eight sixths, nine sixths, ten sixths, eleven sixths, and then two would be twelve sixths because twelve divided by six equals. Two. All right, another way that we can write this part once we get past the one would be one and one sixth, one and two sixths. These are called mixed numbers. One and three sixths, 
one and four sixths, one and five sixths, and two holes. Same thing. So it looks like we're stopping right here. Do you see this nice dark bolded shaded line? It kind of stops right there. So it stops at nine sixths if we're looking at our fraction greater than one and one and three sixths. So those would be our two possible answer choices here. A says one and three sixths. It all looks good until we get right there because it should say six we should have that on there. So because that THS is not on there, this is not correct. So let's go ahead and eliminate. B is the word form of nine sixths. And we do have that THS there. And it does land on the fraction greater than one of nine sixths. So B would be the correct answer. One and three thirds. Three thirds is the same as one whole. And one plus one equals two holes. Here's two holes and that is not the same thing. So we can eliminate C. D is 10 sixths, which is really close. It's right here, but it's too far past it. Eliminate. And finally, one and three sixths. That's where we are right there too. So we can keep that one. Okay. All right, go ahead and make any corrections that you need to make for number one, and then let's check out number two. Okay, let's take a look at number two and let's quickly skim the question. I'm seeing some boxes with answer choices there. And to me, this is going to be something that we're filling in statements. So it's an editing task, editing task, awesome. Okay, now let's read and break down the question. It says that Jeffrey is trying to plot a point on the line below. So Jeffrey's trying to plot something here. The location of his point is seven halves. That two represents the total jumps between each hole. Watch this, one, two. There, now we're at the next hole. One, two, now we're at the next hole. One, two, now we're at the next hole. So that's why it's broken into halves. Each hole number is cut in half. And the location of his point should be at seven halves, so really, I need to do one half seven times. So remember that we start at the zero and we don't start counting until we make that first jump. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right here should be seven halves. Okay, but that's not what we really need to do. We need to answer the, we need to complete the statements because check this out. It says, complete the statements to describe the strategy Jeffrey can use to correctly plot seven halves on the number line. Okay, so we have to determine a strategy that Jeffrey can use to plot the number. Let's take a look at what we've got. It says, to plot seven halves correctly on the number line, he can start at the whole number zero, we did that, and make seven equal jumps at each marker. We did that, right? We made seven jumps at each marker and each little part, each one of these would be considered the marker. So A looks really good. Let's take a look at B though. B says start at the whole number seven and make two equal jumps at each marker. That doesn't make sense, right? So our correct answer here should be A. The next one says there are two equal jumps between each whole number. So, the numerator is two or the denominator is two. Well, when we're looking at the two right here, we see that it's below, it's down below, which means it is the denominator. Sorry if I lost some light there for a second. Okay, so the denominator is two. The two equal jump stands for the denominator. All right, and that is how you do those two questions. Now, if you know that you need some more help with this skill, let me point you in the right direction. If you know that you need some more help understanding fractions, fractions greater than one on a number line or with a model, I want you to check out McCarthy Math 155 Unit 8. You should see a link below. Now, McCarthy Math 155 is a jam-packed, high-energy daily video series. Teachers are using this as a daily intervention in their classrooms. Now, McCarthy Math 155 is a membership, but I'm giving everybody a free trial for seven days to check it out. So go ahead and click that link below. When you see around the website, it'll 
it'll say grab your free trial here. You just click that and you'll be ready to go. Then teachers, if you're ready to become a member, just know that with these videos, you are able to share them with your students and I walk you through how to do just that in the tutorials tab. A few years ago, I also created a series called How to Pass the Math FSA. I'm gonna go ahead and link the video below for the same standard that we did today. Now the How to Pass the Math FSA series was created a few years ago, back when the FSA was a computer-based test. It's actually a paper-based test now for most. Still, the How to Pass the Math FSA series provides great practice if you still need some more help, so check that out. I also encourage you to follow me on my social media platforms. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. You can also find me on YouTube at McCarthy Math Academy. While you're here on YouTube, if you could smash that like button for me, I would really appreciate it. You see, I'm on a mission to make math fun, make it click and make it stick for as many third, fourth and fifth graders as possible. So when you smash that like button, you're letting other third, fourth and fifth graders know, hey, Miss McCarthy can help you out. Come on over here. And that's exactly what my my goal is. So thanks a lot for that like. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And finally, before you go, I just want you to know that you were created for a reason. That's right. You are the ones that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers ready to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, choose kindness, and you always have that choice. And I will see you all on the next episode.